Okay, so here's the equation for photosynthesis. We start off with carbon dioxide and water, and we turn it into glucose and oxygen. So if you want to balance that, you're going to have to put a six in front of the in front of the carbon dioxide, uh, and because we've got two, you're going to have to put a six in front of the glucose, and we get six oxygens as well. Okay, now the thing to realise there is that there is very little chemical energy in uh, carbon dioxide and water, not much chemical energy at all, whereas this has got a lot of chemical energy stored in those, in oxygen and in glucose. Okay, so that reaction is very endothermic and it won't happen, okay? Generally speaking, that reaction would, it's impossible to make it happen. The plants very cleverly make it happen by breaking it down into many, many, many different steps and getting that um, uh, <coughs> using all of those reactions to turn the uh, the, the the energy from sunlight um, into uh, transfer into chemical energy. Right now, the plant is then going to use that chemical energy. What do they use it for? Right, they don't just make glucose to store glucose. In fact, they can't store glucose because glucose is very soluble in water, and that means it will draw water towards it by osmosis. So it can't be stored in cells. It's gotta be turned into something else. Right, let's see what they can do. Right, now plants uh, do carry out some respiration, which is the exact opposite of um, not respiration there. This is the exact opposite of photosynthesis. Here it is. So uh, we get glucose and react with oxygen um, carbon dioxide and water, and that is very exothermic. You get energy out, chemical energy has turned into heat energy. Uh, now, animals use respiration quite a lot because they move, so they turn it into kinetic energy, and warm-blooded animals also need it to keep their body temperature high, which is usually a lot higher than the surroundings. Obviously, plants don't do either of those things. They don't move, and they don't maintain uh, themselves at a higher temperature in the surroundings. So they don't need as much, anything like as much um, glucose for respiration as animals do, but they do need some. What do they use it for? Well, um, they will need it for things like active transport. Okay, because the plants take in minerals in their roots. Uh, they will also need it for building larger molecules. That's usually endothermic. So, for example, building DNA, RNA, building proteins from amino acids, um, building up cellulose from glucose, starch from glucose, all of those things require energy. And some of that energy is going to come from respiration. All of that energy is going to come from respiration. Right, so they use it for that. Now, glucose is also converted into proteins. We can see here. Um, um, Glucose obviously contains the elements carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, but proteins have also got the element nitrogen in there. And where does that nitrogen come from? Well, it comes from nitrate ions, which are taken in uh, by the plant's roots. Okay, and there's also a little bit of sulfur in proteins as well, which, uh, that, but uh, largely you can see proteins are carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and that, that, that part of the molecule all comes from the glucose. Uh, Plants also store, uh, we've got over here, plants store some glucose as starch. Uh, so a plant, for example, like a potato plant or a carrot or something will store large amounts of starch in the roots, in swollen roots. Uh, and that's used as an energy, an energy store later for the plant. So when during when the, when the plant can't photosynthesize, it can use can rely on that source of energy, that supply of chemical energy. Uh, it also goes to, into into seeds. A lot of seeds like wheat and cereals, uh, they have a lot of starch in them, and that starch is used when the when the when the seed germinates. When it can't photosynthesize yet, it's got to grow into a small plant, and so that energy store provides the uh, so the so the seedling can grow. Okay. 
Starch, of course, is a polymer of glucose. So you get lots, thousands of glucose is all joined together into one large molecule. And that gives the advantage. Starch is insoluble, so it doesn't draw in water into the cells like glucose will do because uh, this is like not osm it doesn't cause osmosis. So it can be stored. Right, let's go down here to um, uh, fats and oils. Okay, now uh, fat, a lot of plants will uh, will store fats and oils, particularly in the seeds. Uh, fats and oils contain similar elements to um, they contain similar elements to to carbohydrates, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, but the amount of oxygen is very much reduced. And that means that they're a very, they're a much, um, they're a much more potent source of chemical energy. There's more energy stored per gram in fats than there is in uh, glucose or carbohydrates. And a lot of plants will, instead of having their seed energy store as starch, it will be as an oil. So, for example, olives do that. Sunflower seeds very rich in oils. Um, rapeseed oil. Lots of different plants will store, will give their energy store for the seedling as a fat or an oil rather than as a carbohydrate like starch. Okay, and finally, let's have a think about uh, plants make cellulose. Now, cellulose is also a polymer of glucose, uh, like starches, and but it's not used as an energy store. Uh, cellulose is a structural material and it's used to give the cellulose cell wall mechanical strength. Okay, so plants, um, all plant cells all have, are all surrounded by a cellulose cell wall, which gives them strength. Also, um, the wood of a tree, that is basically cellulose, which has undergone some more chemical reactions. Uh, and so, uh, you know, the, a, a tree trunk is very important to the tree. It's a structural material which allows the tree to, you know, grow tall and so it can photosynthesize so that its leaves can catch uh, light and um, not be blocked out by other things. Woody tissue in a plant gives a plant, like their skeleton, if you like, it gives them their, their, their rigidity and their, their strength. Okay, and they need glucose to make that because they need glucose to make cellulose and the cellulose makes the, the woody tissue of a plant. Okay, so that's what happens to the glucose, which is made by photosynthesis in the plant. It is used for uh, chemical energy stores and it's used for structural materials. Um, so can't be stored itself because it's too osmotically active.